Good morning to you. Welcome to Kathy Moore Ministries and another bite-sized word. I want to speak to everybody who feels that they have a prophetic ministry or they're called to uh, the office of a prophet, whatever it may be, you will know. Um, the, I wrote this book, You're Now Seasoned, during 2020. And in this book, there's a chapter, chapter 9, called Happy Prophets Are the New Thing. And back then, I was thinking along the lines of, well, over many decades of being involved in prophetic ministry, it's always really puzzled me that as soon as people start to become familiar with prophetic gifts or um, offices or whatever, anything to do with prophecy or prophetic ministry, if people do not understand the character of God, what they do is they look at the Old Testament prophets and they model their ministry around that instead of looking at the new testament and seeing how jesus operated because jesus is our role model as how do we operate prophetically jesus only did and said what he saw the father do he was obedient he was um, very careful to and when i say careful he was obedient to he said i only do what i see the father do when he spoke words of um, judgment, condemnation, anything that wasn't a positive word, he was speaking to the religious people. So when he called them uh, whitewashed sepulchres um, uh, and other things that he called them, I can't think right now, um, he, he was speaking to people who were still stuck in religion. But when he dealt with the everyday normal person when it came to healing or or something they need a deliverance healing restoration he dealt kindly with them he showed them the gracious kind heart of the father so if you feel that you are called to any kind of prophetic ministry um, the first thing that you need to do for me i would say the first thing that you need to do is get to know the character of god that he is good. He's aware of injustice and sin and, and things that need to change. But he it's not very often that he will use an everyday believer to go and confront, confront issues of sin and unrighteousness when it comes to dealing with the body of Christ. When we, uh, we know that, that the gift of prophecy is to edify, exhort, and comfort. And also, prophets are called, in Ephesians it says, prophets are called to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So prophets today are not called to come into the church and point out everybody's sin and bring everything back into order. Prophets today are called to equip the believer to hear from God for themselves. That's the starting point. And so, when I, and this is a whole teaching I can get into, which I don't want to do now. I just want to give you some encouragement about your prophetic ministry. You called, and I call them happy prophets. And the reason is, if you will get your thinking adjusted, your mind renewed to the Word of God, you will begin to see things the way God sees them, and you will be surprised that God is not always out there looking for the sin in people's lives so he can sort them out and he's not unhappy when he looks at what's going on in his church now there are people who are called to speak to leaders to that god does speak to them about things that are not right but i'm talking about the everyday believer who wants to flow in prophecy god has called some people and he's trained them over decades and they built relationship with leaders in the body of Christ. So they come into a church situation and they have the liberty to share something that they feel God wants to be adjusted or maybe even repentance that needs to happen because someone hasn't listened to, to the Spirit of God convicting them to repent. And then they'll do this kind of adjusting and rebuking, if I use that word, behind closed doors because that person has a place of credibility and they have the liberty to speak to people who trust them 
and who know them and they can say this is what I feel God has shown me but when it comes to uh, someone who lives in a cave in the mountain and they're not part of the body of Christ and they see all the problems because they're seeing it they're filtering through the offense that they actually have and they're seeing all the faults and the weakness and the problems in the church and they come in to church on a Sunday morning and they want to get up front and get the microphone and nobody knows them and they want to bring a word of correction that is out of line with how the body of Christ operates. Prophets today are called um, to build the body. I'm talking about how we deal with the body of Christ. And so happy prophets will see things. I just call them happy prophets. Will, will see things from God's perspective, which is there's always a redemptive purpose. There's always joy in what he sees. There's always a... a a turnaround, a situation that can be turned around. So God sees the solution on the other side of the problems that we see. And if we give him enough time, he'll show us how to go and say something. We're not called to confront issues and, and hold up placards and sort things out that's going on in the world. We're called to minister to one another, to edify, exhort, and comfort one another. So there was a guy in the Old Testament and I'm just giving you a very quick overview. There's so much more that we can get into in this subject. Um, in the book of Habakkuk, here we have a guy. He heard the word of God about judgment that was coming. He saw the wickedness of man. And then he said, Habakkuk chapter 1, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity? And cause me to see trouble, for plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, therefore perverse judgment proceeds. That's Habakkuk 1, 2-4. This sounds a lot like what's going on in the world around us today. But has God called you and I as believers to go out there and say, there's wickedness here, there's unrighteousness here, the judgment of God is coming. No, he hasn't called us to do that. He's called us to pray, to say the things that he says. Um, so Habakkuk, even though he saw all of this stuff, and he went to God and he said, how long will I cry? Why are you not hearing me? He ended his writings. I'm going to re read from you. He ended his writings with a statement of faith in God that even when things don't change or perhaps even become worse, he would cling to God and rejoice in him. He knew where his strength came from. Habakkuk's name in Hebrew means embrace. So if you feel that all you're seeing is the wickedness, um, you can go uh, Habakkuk. Uh, he says, I'll read it to you. He says, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high hills. That's Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. So, a quality of a happy prophet, in spite of what you see going on around you, because prophets and prophetic people are wired up to discern things. They see the problems, but it's what we do with what we see that matters. A quality of a happy prophet is to have the faith to cling to God, to embrace his faithfulness, to preserve his people. Habakkuk knew the importance of living by faith and not by sight. If we live by what we see around us, we won't have faith in God to change it. He cried out to God in prayer, asking him to remember mercy in wrath. He knew the promise of God, this is Habakkuk, to fill the earth with the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the sea. Happy prophets are filled with an understanding that despite what we see and the heavy burden we may feel for those, who have turned their backs on God, we can cling to Him as He uses us to be a channel of faith in His good plans. Prophets are the ones who need to be giving the church a word to embrace God. No matter what we see around us, God will preserve His people. A prophet has called the church to live by faith 
and not by sight. That was from your now season. So change your thinking about how God wants to use you in prophetic ministry. He wants you to encourage somebody. Speaking a word of doom and gloom and pointing out sin does not encourage somebody. We have the Holy Spirit who can convict us of things we do wrong and things we need to repent of, things that need to be adjusted. So be a person who sees the solution. Even though you may stand in front of someone and you see, you know what they're getting up to behind closed doors. Let the Holy Spirit um, bring that person in, back into alignment. But you speak a word of truth. You speak a word that speaks into their identity. You speak a word into how God sees that person and a word that brings them into an understanding of their purpose. Bringing that word about the goodness of God is what will lead someone to repentance. And then they step into their true identity in Christ. So I hope that made sense to you and, and helped you a little bit when understanding prophecy and prophetic ministry and be encouraged with that today. Live by faith and not by sight.